I've gone ahead and opened Photoshop and I pulled up the same image that's in the slideshow and you can pull this off of our Open Graphic Arts stock images site if you want to use it. Um, you don't need to use this image though, any image will do for what I want to show you. And so one of the first ways that you might want to use to select color if you're um, using the type tool and you want to change the color of the text or you're going to grab a paintbrush and you want to decide what color you're going to paint with, maybe this purple color is not the color you want. Uh, you can use the foreground and background color pickers. And so all you have to do is click on it and it will launch the color picker dialog. I clicked the square swatch on the left hand side so now it opened up, it's showing me the purple I'm using and I can choose a different color by using the hue slider. So maybe we want an orange color. And then you can choose what kind of level of orange you want. Do you want it to be incredibly saturated and bright in orange or do you want it to be um, very saturated but not as much orange, it gets darker and darker, you can find some sort of happy medium. When you're happy with your color you can select OK and now the color in the foreground can be used to paint. You can store two colors because you can store a foreground and a background color and so we could change this background color to be a green color if, if we want green. And now I have two colors to choose from. Now when I paint I'm going to paint with the foreground color by default but there is a little um, half arrow with two arrows on it thing in the corner. If you click on that it will swap the colors and so then you can paint with green and swap it back to paint with the orange. Um, you, can, you can do that to do a number of things. I'm going to choose File Revert because I don't actually want to paint in this. Um, it's important to know that, that the foreground and background colors work kind of in a literal way and I have the color and I can paint with the color if you type with the type tool now you can highlight the text and you can change the color etc. But they also affect other processes within Photoshop and the one example that I want to show you is when you apply a filter. We'll do an entire lesson on filters so I'm not going to go into detail but as a good Photoshop user I do not want to edit the original and so I am going to right click on the layer and choose to convert it to a smart object a smart object allows you to edit your artwork non-destructively and then I'm going to duplicate it so I'm going to right click and duplicate the layer because I'm going to show you how the background well, maybe I didn't actually hit duplicate let me try that one more time oh I did okay. um, I want to show you how the background color affects the filter and so in the example we had a blue background on the first time we applied the filter. And so with one of the layers selected, if you go to the filter menu, you can choose filter gallery. And some of the filters will be affected by the background color and some will not. And so you can see colored pencil, which is the first filter that is like the default. Um, it is definitely affected by the background color. You can see the same blue color that I just chose as my background color is now um, heavily involved in the image, but the cutout filter, not so much. And so I'm just going to go ahead and choose the, the colored pencil one and select OK. And then select the other layer, the one that you haven't edited yet, and change the background color. You can choose whatever color you want. I'll choose, let's say, a pinky purple color. And so now if I apply the same exact filter, if we go back to the filter menu and choose filter gallery again, now the same exact filter is being applied. I didn't adjust any of the settings and now you get a purple look and so you can compare this is what it looks like when you have a purple background this is what it looks like when you have a blue background color. Now in the slideshow I went one step further and I basically said this looks really ugly and why would I ever want to do this in my project? Um, whenever you're applying filters or features of Photoshop to your document I would encourage you to think what am I doing that's providing some sort of skill set that the average Joe off the street couldn't just open an image and hit filter and color pencil? And so if you use the default settings, it's going to look like a stock image. It's going to look like you don't really know how to use Photoshop and you're just hitting buttons. But what you can do is you can say, I kind of like the look and the texture that the color pencil allows me to have. Let's do step backward here. Um, and you could use maybe a layer blending mode, which we'll talk about later in the slideshow, to overlay your image on top of another copy of your image or even a different image. And so when I use the overlay layer blending mode, you can see that now I have created a, an effect that is completely different from the original. Maybe it's stylized for whatever reason. And I get the look of 
the crosshairs of a colored pencil, but I don't necessarily have to have an image that looks kind of funky and weird and just not really pleasing at all. And so you could, there's a bunch of different ones, but this is the overlay. And then my favorite thing to do is lower the opacity or the fill. And so you can get texture from the filter without having to really ruin the, the look and feel of your picture. Okay, so I'd like everyone to practice uh, changing the fill um, color of the foreground and the background color swatches on the tools panel. When you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and move on to the next video and we will continue with the lecture.